I recently suffered through a video that consisted of a guy named Ben Shapiro, you know, the guy that's really famous because he talks fast. Is a commodity. And the difference in between those two views is that if you think healthcare is right, now you're going to use the government to cram down on doctors that they must serve you at a particular price, or cram down on taxpayers that they have to pay for a certain level of your care, or cram down on insurance companies that they can't be insurance companies anymore, they have to be health coverage institutes essentially. Which is when, when they say you're, you have to accept pre-existing conditions, it's not an insurance company anymore. If you got a fire insurance company and they say you have to accept pre-existing conditions, it would just be called the piggy bank. Right? You burn down your house and then go get fire insurance. So that's the insurance companies don't work that way. Now I really don't understand why the people like this guy. Pretty much everything he says consists of various fallacies and fabricated information. And a video that perfectly entails what I said is a video called Ben Shapiro, Liberty University. It's like the title is another chapter in Ben Shapiro's life. A new fallacy awaits. So without further ado, let's start with Ben Shapiro, Liberty University. Before I begin, I wanted to take just a moment uh, so we can silently pray together for Alfie Evans. If you don't know the story of Alfie Evans, Alfie Evans is a two-year-old child in Britain uh, who has a degenerative brain condition, and the government of Britain is now declaring that his parents cannot leave the country with Alfie Evans to seek experimental treatment. He has to stay in a hospital and die at the hand of the state. Yes, this is because his condition is untreatable whatsoever. If the parents are trying to remove him from the hospital, this would only cause the child to suffer even more. To top it off, even if this child were to give him some sort of treatment, which there is is not as far as science knows, the damage that was done would not be able to be reversible. He lost nearly 80% of his brain and is not even capable of moving, talking, and only capable of some breathing on his own. It was also shown that Alfie was near or completely deaf and blind. Is this the life you would want this child to have? So before we go any further, I'd like to just take about five seconds here, ten seconds, and just uh, pray silently for, uh, for Alfie and his family who are, I think, doing God's work and standing up for the value of life. Standing up for the value of life? Is the value of life being hooked up to a machine with barely a quarter of your brain left without the ability to talk, see, think, hear, or breathe? Thank you, I appreciate it. Well, I've long believed that the future of our nation is inextricably intertwined with the future of Judeo-Christian value system. <sighs> The argument preached by Christians around the world is now hailed by Ben Shapiro, an argument that's been debunked more times than I have hair on the underside of my testicles. So to cut to the shit, no, America was not founded by Judeo-Christian values. In fact, it's the exact opposite. America was founded on the Enlightenment principles, and funnily enough, one of those principles was the separation of church and state, which even more ironic is that pretty much all of the founders of the Enlightenment principles were not religious at all. So no, America was not founded by Judeo-Christian values. Let's hope he doesn't bring this up again. Points out that individual virtue isn't natural. It is a struggle. And we can avoid that struggle by handing over all power to a nanny state. Judeo-Christianity says, you're free and therefore you must give. Collectivist philosophy says, you are unfree and thus the state must take on your behalf. Shit, well, I guess I spoke too soon. It's funny how he says that Judeo-Christian values say you're free when the book is riddled with advocation of slavery. He's really picking some juicy cherries. It's this philosophy of collectivism against which Moses and Jesus and George Washington and Thomas Jefferson and James Madison fought. Moses and Jesus fought for rights and slavery? Which book is he reading? Because last I checked, the book is riddled with commands of slavery and how to beat your slave 101. The values that resonate most with human beings are eternal, not changeable, and not relativistic. They are universal. They are not group specific. And most of all, they apply to individual human beings, not group labels. And those values were first embedded clearly and concisely in the Ten Commandments. Values clearly embedded in the Ten Commandments. Like what? Keeping the Sabbath holy? What values does that hold? What values does coveting your neighbors do? In fact, it completely goes against what you believe, Ben. Coveting your neighbor's belongings is the exact definition of capitalism. So I want to go through the Ten Commandments, and I want to explain what they say to today's modern politics what they say to us in the room, and why the Ten Commandments are so important and why they are still the basis for our outreach program on behalf of not only our God, but on behalf of a, of a philosophy that is the only remaining hope for Western civilization. Holy shit. Here we go. I wonder how this is going to go down. So the first commandment is the most controversial and it's also the simplest. I'm the Lord thy God who brought you out of Egypt out of the land of bondage. Now. To start off, this is a bizarre commandment because it doesn't actually command you to do anything on its face. But it does implicitly command you to do something. Remove yourself from the arbitrary bondage of the state and place yourself under a higher set of commandments. Who's to say that the Bible is the higher set of standards? Why should I take the Bible, a book that again advocates slavery and the murder of newborn children? Who the fuck are you to say this is the highest set of standards? I wouldn't even put it at this low- I can't even talk, what the fuck? I wouldn't even put it as the lowest. What the fuck is prr? I wouldn't even put it as the I wouldn't even put it as the lowest. 
The Bible tells us in Genesis that we are each made in God's image. And that means we have the capacity to choose. How the fuck did you make that connection? How does being made in a visible thing's image mean that I had the capacity to choose? I'm not even sure how he just made such an absurd comparison. The second commandment is also particularly important in today's society. It says, thou shalt have no other gods before me. This is particularly relevant when it comes to the cults of personality that seem to dominate our politics. How the fuck did you make that connection? Why, why do these commandments somehow have a deeper meaning to Ben's brain? Does he even have a brain? I'm starting to think not. Is this what the rest of the video is going to be? Him just taking his ancient commandments and somehow trying to make it apply to modern politics? Fuck. The third commandment says that we must not take God's name in vain. This doesn't merely mean that we shouldn't shout, God bleep it. God can handle a little potty mouth. It does mean that we can't twist God's words to justify our own political agendas. <clears throat> oh, okay, I see how he made that connection. Don't take God's name in vain equals we can't use God's name to justify our political agendas, which makes zero fucking sense. But wait a minute, Ben. Isn't that what you're doing right now? Using God to justify your political agenda? Hmm. Christians cannot justify abortion by misquoting Matthew 7:12 and talking about the golden rule. If they do, they are putting their own words in God's mouth. Wait a minute. Ben believes that the New Testament is the word of God? I thought Ben was Jewish. Well, you know what they say, when the dildo is halfway in your anus, might as well put in the rest. We can't use We cannot use Deuteronomy 16:20 to justify a government cracking down on religious people to promote same-sex marriage while deliberately ignoring the words of Leviticus. And you can't ignore Exodus 21, a chapter that completely condones slavery. If you're going to use your book to justify why we can't make churches do things, then you got to go all the way. You can't just half-ass it. Come on, bring back slavery. And by the way, where the fuck has Ben getting the idea that we are forcing churches to allow gay marriage? Churches can refuse to do so and are protected under the First Amendment. No one's forcing anyone to do anything. Selectively citing the Bible while ignoring all the inconvenient parts. That makes you a Bible abuser, and it makes you dishonest as well. Holy shit. Did Ben just say exactly what he's doing right now? This is fucking hilarious. He took the words right out of my mouth. The fourth commandment says that we must remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. One of the weirdest elements of collectivism is that it says we all owe something to the collective, and yet, weirdly, collectivists seem to give a lot less to charity. New York Mayor Bill de Blasio routinely rips into the greedy rich. The guy gave a grand total of 350 bucks to charity last year on an adjusted gross income of $223,449. By the way, he paid the guy who prepared his taxes 500 bucks. When you see income as the state's responsibility rather than a gift from God, it alleviates the responsibility of actually having to pass that gift on to those who are less fortunate. Instead, you can demand that the government play God and grab other people's cash. The commandment to honor the Sabbath also reminds us that our time doesn't actually belong to the state. It belongs to us. Every seven days we say, no more. What in the literal fuck does this have to do with remembering the Sabbath? I'm really just in a loss for words at this point. Now, this part where he's about to explain the meaning behind the fifth commandment is just really redundant. And I'm just going to skip it because uh, he's, just, uh, he's just rambling like a fucking gerbil. Oh, here, oh, here we go. Okay. And not. Okay, people are not averse to murder unless they are taught that they are personally responsible for the actions they take. Nowhere is this truer than in the case of abortion. Nowhere. As so in short, people don't know murder is wrong unless they realize the consequences. I am I getting that right? Well, I can tell you this, Ben. I don't need a book to tell me that killing somebody is wrong. In fact, I think your book would tell me otherwise. If you need a book to tell you what's right and wrong, then for fuck's sake, keep the book. But in all seriousness, I don't think people would be running around killing people if they didn't have a 3,000 year old book telling them otherwise. In fact, it's quite the opposite. Pretty much every terrorist attack is done in the name of God. And when you take that and the fact that atheists don't kill because the sky daddy told them so into consideration, we realize that these commandments are fucking stupid and pointless. The seventh, the seventh commandment is not to commit adultery. Again, you would think that this one would be obvious, right? It isn't, unfortunately. This commandment assumes the value of individual human beings. It assumes that you have the individual capacity to control your own nature. Actually, no it doesn't. The fact that it's a commandment shows that the book thinks people will be committing adultery if the book didn't tell them not to. Collectivists reject both of these assumptions wholesale. There's a reason that Marx believed in what he called the community of women. He meant widespread promiscuity. The idea that one man and one woman must sublimate their desires in order to promise each other their trust and love, it stands in stark contrast to the ownership of the collective. 
Family formation is the single greatest threat to the substitution of leftist values for Judeo-Christian ones. Because it assumes that you personally are capable of overcoming your own nature. And because the creation of children changes your life. It means that you are now responsible for someone else. Your highest priority is protection of your family rather than serving the collective. And we're back to making completely no fucking sense. Could we just go back to making semi no sense? Theft. The New Testament says in 2 Thessalonians, quote, the one who is unwilling to work shall not eat. Charity is mandated by Judeo-Christian religion. Theft is forbidden. And legalized theft is still theft. Collectivism isn't the advocation of legal stealing. It's the notion that we should use our money to benefit everyone. Pretty much every single Western civilization in the world has a form of collectivism that takes the form of free healthcare, free college, etc. So why the fuck doesn't America have the same? The ninth commandment is not to bear false witness against your neighbor. Perhaps this one is the most commonly violated commandment of our time. The willingness to suggest that our neighbors are nasty people, bad characters, for the sake of elevating particular collective ideologies. Take, for example, the issue of gun control. Now, you can be for more gun control, you can be against more gun control. But folks on the left constantly make the case that if you oppose their agenda, it's because you don't care enough about dead kids. That you're simply willing to watch them die for a buck oh five from the National Rifle Association. Okay, that's not only a lie, it is bearing false witness because there is no evidence for this proposition. No evidence for this proposition? Well, according to the FBI, the vast majority of shootings are done by people who have illegally obtained their guns. So if anyone is bearing false witness, it's you. So here's why all of this matters. Here's why I went through all 10 commandments. Okay, America is struggling right now in a lot of ways. But the biggest struggle we are having, the most difficult struggle we are having is the struggle for our national soul. We're so angry at each other right now, right? The anger is palpable. When you go and you talk to members of your own family about politics, there's no way to have a good discussion without it devolving into people yelling at each other. Well, maybe that's you, Ben, but when or if I have a discussion about politics, it's usually pretty calm. Now, as for why yours isn't, that could be because of the fact that you're so extreme and biased with your position. You even sell mugs to the little leftists. If you're so concerned about the supposed soul of America you speak of, you wouldn't be a smug dick whenever you hear someone with an opposite opinion. But obviously, this is not the reason you gave this speech, but I'll get to that in just a minute. Well, why are people so angry right now? We're so angry because our common vision has been destroyed. We used to believe in the founding vision, supported by the framework of personal virtue, culled from Judeo-Christian morality. The government was there to protect us from hurting each other, and Judeo-Christian morality was there to inculcate virtue in us, so that government didn't have to step in. What in the fuck is he talking about? When did Judeo-Christian vows replace the government's job? What moral virtue did Judeo-Christian vows give? Why do I sound like Russian right now? When did Judeo-Christian values replace the government's job? What moral virtue did you, what moral virtue did, what moral virtue did Judeo-Christian values give that the government didn't? What moral virtue did fuck? What moral virtue fucking fuck? What moral virtue did video video? <laughs> I can't do this shit. What moral virtue? What moral virtue did Judeo fucking dick? What moral virtue did Judeo Christian vows give vows? <laughs> like Russian, you see what I mean? <laughs> All right. Fuck the fucking train. Are you kidding me? When did? What moral virtue did? Ugh. What moral virtue did Judeo-Christian val val values? <laughs> what moral virtue did <laughs> What moral virtue did Judeo-Christian values values values? I can't stop saying values. I don't know what the fuck. What moral virtue did Judeo-Christian values give that the government didn't? Because the only thing that I can think about is slavery. And how do we used to be closer to each other? Can you give me a time period in which America was more united than it was today due to Judeo-Christian values? Because last I checked, slavery, which is a Christian theology, caused the Civil War. Hey, we used to see each other as brothers and sisters, as friends and family, not the 1% versus the 99% or the privileged versus the victims. Right, but that's what's making us look at each other that way. The fact that there's an unfairness in America, the fact that 1% of the US population owns more wealth than the bottom 99% of the population is just unjust. It's just unjust, whatever. So it wasn't leftism and liberalism that made us up in arms. It's the unfairness that is present in modern day America. 
And again, I mention this a lot, but it's the same reason there was a civil war. It's because of the unfairness and immoral act of slavery. Because if we had no one to point out the immoral action that was slavery, there would still be slaves to this day. So to make fun of Bernie Sanders simply because of the fact that he's complaining about something that's unimportant to you is the same reason there was a civil war. By the way, good job of speaking nicely and calmly about politics. You sure aren't a hypocritical piece of shit. We were not enemies. We were a community forged in fire tethered together by a set of values stretching all the way back to the Garden of Eden. Stretching back to the Garden of Eden. So he believes that's a legitimate place and time period. Jesus fucking Christ. But no longer. Somewhere along the way, we came to believe that we stood above the tradition that bore us. That we were better than the philosophical system of the founders. We began to think we were better than God. I can, without a doubt, say that I'm better than the God of the Bible. It's supposed a God that justifies slavery. The murder of thousands of people simply because they worship another genie. A God that advocates the murder of homosexuals. So, yeah, I think I'm better than God. I think most people are. We began to scorn our past. We began to think we could remake the world, tearing down fences without considering why those fences were there in the first place. We were wrong. Okay, we were. It is our job to repair those fences. Not to tear them down. What fences is he talking about? He doesn't go into this and just leaves it as a vague thing. Seriously, what, what the fuck is he talking about? It is our job to reconnect with both the word of God and with the philosophy of individual liberty that sprang from that same word of God. You heard it here first. Ben Shapiro wants to reinstate the word of God, which means he wants slavery, the murdering of homosexuals, and so on. This is the guy that's speaking on behalf of a university. Just let that sink in. If we do all of that, if we do all of that, then we will truly be deserving of God's blessing and fit to proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. Thank you so much. And here we have it, thousands of people standing up and cheering at the great Ben Shapiro. And like I said at the beginning of the video, I have no idea why people like this guy. Well, that's the end of this video. Hopefully the United States reinstates our Judeo-Christian doctrine so we can get God's blessings. Thanks for watching.